This is a robotic rune wire repair of an E4 bile duct injury following a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. The authors have no relevant disclosures. With over 750,000 laparoscopic cholecystectomies performed in the U.S., bile duct injuries continue to be a real problem that requires real solutions. I want to point out the SAGE's safe cholecystectomy program. One salient point, which is relayed here, is that you must clear the lower third of the gallbladder and expose what's called the doublet view, which most of us would be uh, familiar with as a critical view of safety, showing no more than two structures in both the anterior and posterior view. Our case concerns a 68-year-old female with cholelithiasis who developed gallstone pancreatitis. She was seen in an outside hospital and was relatively healthy otherwise with no pertinent past medical history. She had an ERCP with sphincterotomy and then came back for an interval lap cholei. The surgeon encountered an inflamed gallbladder with pus draining from the gallbladder wall. Omentum and duodenum was stuck. There was edema and inflammation, and he opted to fire a stapler across what appeared to be the infundibulum of the gallbladder. Some bile was then noted to be leaking from the cystic plate, which was clipped. The intraoperative cholangiogram is shown here on the left of the screen. You can see that no contrast makes it to the duodenum, uh, and it's very difficult to see any part of the common bile duct. Postoperative HIDA study showed a significant leak from the gallbladder fossa, and post-op MRCP actually showed complete loss of the duct approximately at the bifurcation. The patient was then transferred to us on post-op day two, and an ERCP was performed, which demonstrated free contrast extrav into the intraperitoneal cavity, and the wire was not able to sync up with the biliary system. A cholangiogram also shot postoperatively showed a similar experience with contrast coming from the liver and the wire not being able to meet up with the bile duct stent that was placed during ERCP. Our concern based on preoperative studies was an E3 injury at the confluence of the left and right bile ducts. A large biloma was encountered upon entry into the abdomen and after cleaning up some of the blood and bile we began to note the actual bile injuries. Here we have one of the bile ducts from the right system and the left system was actually able to be cannulated using the PTHC that was placed by IR and that helped in identification. A retrocolic RU and Y approach was adopted and you can see here the jejunal jejunal anastomosis is being fashioned using linear stapler and a spiral knotless absorbable suture. The anterior enterotomy was closed with a running suture. And then the defect in the mesentery was similarly closed with running suture. That limb was then brought up to the defects or injuries. And the posterior row was performed with a running spiral knotless suture, 3-0. The left biliary system was then tied with an absorbable 5-0 and that repair was then cannulated with the PTHC catheter. The bile duct, common bile duct, which had the ERCP stent in it, was closed so that stump could no longer leak. The pigtail in the left biliary system was advanced into the hepaticojejunostomy and the posterior row was completed. The anterior row with the 5-0 absorbable suture was then done in a running fashion. Additionally, the right biliary system was sutured closed. Another defect was then noted and cannulated with an 8 French pediatric catheter Presumably this was the anterior right bile duct and the anterior layer of that hepaticojejunostomy was also completed in a similar fashion. Finally, using running 3-0 spiraling knotless suture, the anterior layer for the entire hepaticojejunostomy was completed. All mesenteric defects were closed. The falciform was divided and brought down to provide some coverage over these new anastomoses, and a drain was placed. Ultimately, this patient had an E4-type injury with the right 
anterior and posterior as well as the left bile ducts injured during the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Anterior cholangiogram the next day demonstrated that the right posterior system had some free leak and so an internal external catheter was placed. At that point there was good opacification from all three repairs. The patient did quite well and was discharged on post-op day 9. She was seen back in clinic and her intraperitoneal drains were removed. One month out from surgery, an IR cholangiogram was repeated, which showed some slight stenosis of the right posterior bile duct, and the catheter was replaced. Two months out from surgery, she had another IR cholangiogram, which showed that all three bile ducts were completely patent when their catheters were backed up. As such, the catheters were removed. It's worth noting that there are some larger retrospective studies on robotic-assisted HJs now. Uh, shown here, this one had 35 robotic-assisted surgeries, the cases took exactly the same amount on average as the laparoscopic counterparts. The blood loss was the same, and the patency rate was actually slightly better, although not statistically better, with the robotic approach. In summary, the robotic hepatoglygenostomy in this patient was not only a safe approach, but may have actually benefited her in discovering and repairing efficiently an injury that was not noted in the preoperative workup. We believe the high-definition stereoscopic camera of the robotic platform, as well as the ergonomics and stability, assisted in the repair of this very difficult injury, which would have been highly complex in an open or laparoscopic approach.